be mindful of the folks that are just entering the webinar. So I'm going to give it about 30 seconds to make sure participants are available. Ben, you want to use this time to talk about your time as a manager on the basketball team? Oh, I, I mean, I can I can go deep on that. Um, yeah. I was, uh, those were the glory days, you know? Um, mm -hmm. You see him on the on the floor, Cameron? Uh-uh. At the women's game? They okay. honor all the former managers. I did not see that. Team. Yeah, yeah. I was a women's manager. I used to do. Uh, I'm an expert in towels, towel folding, and and uh, statistics. <laughs> I, mean, I can take a I can take a charge in the lane if I need to. Um, yeah, ready so for it. Rebound yeah. with the best of them. My friend's ten year old wants to come here so she can do the towels. Really? Yeah. She's like, I want to come be a towel person. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And she came to a game. She's like, Mom, look, they're doing it again. The towels. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool awesome. job. Well, we know we're gonna have some more folks online before. Um, before we get going in, uh, let me just welcome everyone who's already on here. We're going to go ahead and get started out of respect for our guest time tonight. Um, my name is Ben Adams. I'm the Interim Director of New Student and Family Programs, uh, and I'm thrilled to welcome everyone to this webinar for right now. Um, we're thrilled that you are joining us this evening. We've got two amazing guests. Um, this is one that we have been excited about for quite some time, and so we're thrilled that you are joining us. Um, our office, New Student and Family Programs, works to ensure that you as families and parents feel connected to what's going on in the life of your students experience here at Duke and just what's going on across our campus as a whole. Um, again, we're thrilled to have these two amazing guests, but before we introduce them, let me just uh, make a quick note about some logistics. Number one is that this webinar is being recorded, and so we will share this and distribute this widely among our uh, family and parent network afterwards, and it will also be hosted on our office's YouTube page. Um, number two is that we expect this to last roughly 45 minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer, but we're going to save a little time for Q&A at the end. So if you have questions that you'd like to ask coach um, or you'd like to ask uh, Vice President uh, Mary Pat McMahon, then we encourage you to use that Q&A function that you'll find down um, at the bottom of your screen. Just note that we will be giving those questions towards the end of the conversation, so you can use that. Um, and then also, um, just being mindful that some folks may have to hop on or hop off, I want to go ahead and plug our next webinar and make you aware of that. On Monday, April 17th, we're going to be joined by um, the deans of Trinity College of Arts and Sciences, Dean Gary Bennett, and the dean of Pratt School of Engineering, Jerry Lynch. Those are our two schools that house our undergraduate population, um, your students. And so we're going to be asking them to join us for a conversation really about this kind of the state of the undergraduate experience right now at Duke and offer some um, perspective from their chairs. Um, so tonight, let me just let me just kind of tee it up and then I'm going to get out of the way because I've I wanted to hear this conversation for the past couple of months since we know that we're having it. Um, I, we are thrilled to be joined by two very special guests um, for tonight's webinar, Vice Provost and Vice President of Student Affairs, Mary Pat McMahon, um, and Coach Mike Elko, who is our uh, new football coach who had a phenomenal first season and we are over the moon about everything that is going on in Duke football. I just bought my season tickets two weeks ago and I could not be more ecstatic um, about this, uh, this exciting opportunity. So uh, Mary Pat is going to interview coach and kind of go back and forth with a conversation. We've got some questions that we'd love to hear uh, um, answered, but we also know that you as parents and families might have questions as well. Uh, as well. So feel free to use the Q&A function. So I'm gonna pass it off to you all so that we can make the most of this time. So thanks again for joining us on behalf of all families families and parents here, we're thrilled to have you offer a little bit of insight into what the work you do here and how it contributes um, to the life of Duke students. So thanks again for being here. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Nice to be here. Um, thanks to the new student team and to the football team, uh, football staff, who's helped make this possible for us to all be talking today. Um, uh, all right, Coach, first question. Um, you've been at Duke for a little over a year now. Um, we first talked a little bit about, I think there's a lot of content we want to get to, but the first thing we want to get to is um, you mentioned your exit, yep. from the New Jersey Turnpike, and I like, just wanted to make sure that everybody here knows what's your exit. Yeah, so for the background, the first time, last time I was on a Zoom with Mary Pat McMahon, I actually got hired as the Duke football head coach. So me and her going back, this is reminiscent. That's but, right. yeah. uh, exit nine on the Jersey Turnpike, that's where my roots are. Uh, grew up there, spent most of my life there, and uh, uh, since have left and, and not gone back much, it, but yeah, I'm yeah. an exit niner for life. Yeah, we had a lot of talk about the New Jersey Turnpike as part of this interview until someone said we could all get to the interview. That would be great. <laughs> um, and you're, you know, you're a, you're, a, you're a new member of our community. I want to ask you a little bit about how you feel about um, about sort of being here and what's drawing you to do, but you're also a parent. You, you know what these 
folks are going through because you have to tell us about your your own family if you're right like you know what do you got in college yeah right? yeah so it's been a unique experience i've gotten a chance to talk to the incoming freshman yeah. class and yeah. um that's been unique for me because i actually have a freshman son yeah. uh who's playing baseball up at northwestern in yeah. chicago and yeah. so uh as much as you guys are going through being a, a parent yeah. of a college student yeah. so am i uh on my end and then i actually have another son a 10th grader yeah. uh and an eighth grade daughter and so uh we're knee deep in family affairs always yeah. but this year has been really unique i talked to the freshman on like freshman giveaway yeah, uh, totally. and I didn't get a chance to give my own freshman away but yeah. I got to help with your families yeah. and, and your sons and daughters as they get off to college yeah and we really appreciated just part of the new student programs piece and folks who are parents in class of 26 know that we had the whole first year class got the 26 jersey with their name on it um, and then after after a little bit of uh, working through things we figured out how to get everybody a jersey yeah. who was here in the fall semester and that's done so much to create community at Duke and so been a a terrific start. Yeah, and awesome. thank you to Chris Alston for oh, getting yeah. that done and his yeah. marketing team. But that was an awesome Incredible. way to just kick off the yeah. fall season. Incredible. Lots of different ways that we've sort of started off in a different manner this year. You've been a big part of it. Um, first question for the sort of this part part of the process is what what drew you to do and like what have you found? Right? Like as you've come in, you've been here um, almost a year now. Yeah. Um, you know, what what strikes you as you know, what drew you to do community? What's been true what surprised you yeah I, I probably the biggest thing that drew me here was i'm still a believer in the student athlete experience yeah. and i think um as as college athletics is kind of shifting and shaping into a lot of different directions i still think here at duke we're providing what it was all about which yeah. is giving kids an opportunity to expand themselves in every aspect of their life uh, become great on the football field obviously and compete yeah. and represent this university uh, but also go out and get a world-class degree and compete in the classroom and um, create opportunities for them in life that they wouldn't get elsewhere we sell that to a lot of our recruits which is um you know this is a place that will change your life and and that's not everywhere yeah. and this place is unique and so uh what i've learned since i've been here is yeah. i was 100 right yeah. uh in that yeah. belief every time i meet a duke student uh i've got out to kville i've gone out and interacted with a lot of students and their stories and their experiences here are amazing, amazing. um and it's just what they do and what they bring to this campus is phenomenal yeah. and um yeah i just think that that allows us to launch from such a beautiful starting point for where this program can go yeah yeah so you found that the that the that your that your players are really immersed i think in the rest of the duke community and the sort of their academic experience and their leadership development i saw Dwayne carter walking a family around yeah. yesterday um and i ran into a bunch of student athletes walking over here who i know from different leadership opportunities so you you know when i first got here I was sort of wondering when I was going to find out about sort of the real story. <laughs> and what you're saying is the real story is it is what it it is what it appears, right? Yeah. Because our students are fully embracing of the full student athletes for some incredible opportunities for them. Yeah, I think so. And I yeah. think we try to encourage them to get around and, and be involved in it and be involved in the community. And we don't majority of our kids live on campus we yeah. don't live off yeah. campus we don't live in apartments we're right here in the dorms yeah. with the normal student body and uh, I think all of that just brings a level of camaraderie but it's great for our student athletes yeah. to interact with okay. um, people outside of athletics yeah. I think that's a big piece of the college experience too yeah. yeah and I regularly meet players who I don't know are on the team right I can <laughs> guess based on how they show up but but I don't know they're on the team I meet them different ways for yeah. student involvement student policies and things like that hopefully all good all good yeah no for <laughs> sure for sure all good and it's been it's been a real pleasure yeah um, so last year was a winning season. Terrific. Congratulations on a you know incredible start in your time at Duke. Um, and people are looking at game stat sheets and all the fans are sort of seeing that there's all different ways to count, count the season as a success, but we want to give you an opportunity. Um, how are you measuring success that isn't captured on the, on the win loss column or yeah. on individual players? Yeah. I think the thing we talk to our team about the most is, is just becoming the best version of themselves. Yeah. Like we, we challenge ourselves 365 days a year to become the absolute best version of who we can be. And if we do that collectively within our locker room, we have 110 student athletes in our locker room. And if we do that collectively, then we should be proud of, of what we accomplish. And yeah. if we work and we do the things that we're supposed to do, I think ultimately we'll get success and results on the field, but we'll never judge ourselves or measure ourselves just by that. You right. know, we want to make sure that we're doing things the right way in every aspect of our life. And um, as I've been through this for 23 years, the people who do that, the teams that do that, they tend to have success on Saturday. Yeah. Kind of signature things that you do to build culture. Um, yeah, I think we did something that was really cool. We called it the four H's. Yeah. So it was our history, our heroes, our heartbreaks and our hopes. Yeah. And we actually got uh, the majority of our roster up in front of the team, yeah. coaches, Love staff, yeah. players, 
um, and just told their story. And I think we've, we've spent a lot of time talking to our guys about like, get to know each other. Like you're amazed. Like I can work with somebody across the hall mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Um, and I may not know his family situation. I not, may not know his why or what got him or what drives him. Yeah. Um, and we just encourage our guys to connect on, on a level a little bit deeper than just, you know, Hey, how are you? Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and I think that played a huge role in it coming together the way it did. Yeah, I'm surprised, you know, the, the this generation of young people is is really good at sort of being insightful and sharing more. I'm always, I'm, I'm impressed with our Duke students every day, but I'm particularly impressed with their ability to sort of stand up um, kind of relatively on the spot and be sort of, you know, you know, share, you know, be candid, be thoughtful and share insights and then listen to one another. Yeah. Um, and there, and that sort of that trait, I mean, these are, these are Duke parents, so they know that that's a trait that their kids share. But I love the, I'm, I'm not surprised the H, is it four H's? Yeah, four yeah. H's. I'm not surprised that that works out really well yeah. with your guys. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. It did, it yeah. did. And, and for the parents out there who are wondering, do your, do your kids ever get off of their phones and social yes. media? Yes, when yeah. they're here at Duke, we do, yeah. we get off. Yeah. We interact and we have a lot of fun together. Yeah, it makes a big. I mean, it's sort of that that that's a huge piece of how they they wouldn't be successful no. if they weren't if they weren't doing that. So, uh -uh. oh, it's fantastic. Um, so you've been working with eighteen to twenty two year olds professionally. So do I, and you've been doing that your whole life. So have I. Um, our parents and families um, are dealing with this age of students, maybe for the first time, if their eldest is currently a Duke, right? If they're if like you, their oldest kid is in college now. Um, what do parents and families need to know about this age? Oh, just let this blends in with age range and how to work with um, this generation of young adults. We just touched on a couple of these things, um, but yeah, speaking as, a, speaking as somebody who knows this generation of kids and as a parent yourself, um, what are some of the ways, particularly in navigating, let's say this college piece yeah. and this sort of maybe people are, maybe people are a country away or in a different country or um, just sort of different time zones and schedules? Yeah, I, I think probably the biggest thing we drive by is each kid has his own path. Yeah. Uh, to get yeah. through college, you know, and as they journey from 18 to 22 yeah. under our watch, I yeah. think um, we have to be mindful of the fact that each kid does have his own path. And then yeah. what we have to do is we've got to encourage them to find it and then create these conversations and yeah. guardrails to make sure that the path ultimately ends, you know, in the right direction, yeah. in, the, in the direction they want to go. But um, I have found, you know, with my son and, and yeah. also with the kids that I've been around coaching that, um, you know, there's going to be bumps in the road, there's yeah. going to be ups and downs, um, but they respond very well to education, they bond, respond very well to structure. Yeah. Um, as long as they feel like you have their best interest in heart. Yes. And so there's a lot of connection that we have to do. There's a lot of listening yeah. that we have yeah. to do. Um, and ultimately, I think that gets our kids on the path they want to be on. Yeah, one of the things that, you know, Carol Dweck in the sort of growth mindset research that was sort of really trendy in all the student development work now a dozen, 10 years ago, it's everywhere. It's this idea of, you know, make sure that you give students constructive feedback, right. help people sort of you know, don't don't overstate or over exaggerate success. You know, help people understand that sort of working and working towards improvement is more important than you know the sort of the golden sort of standard of everything's perfect all the yeah. time. Um, and I think our student athletes have benefited for a long time because they your guys fail in front of everybody um, all day. You know, all day even when they win the game, right? Yeah. They still have opportunities to sort of mess up and sort of be right in front. Everybody sees it, yeah. um, and I think that creates a sort of culture of learning to be authentic and connect, and then just keep growing. Yeah, there. yeah. And it's funny that you share that because it's literally the last conversation I have yeah. with them before yeah. they go on their own in our program. Yeah is understand that failure is coming yes, uh, and it's going to come faster than you've ever seen it before because you're competing in the classroom with like-minded right. students, you're That's competing right. on the field with like athletes um, and you just better be aware of it and it's okay to fail. Yeah. Um, what's part is that you learn from it and yeah. you improve and you grow every day. And yeah. if you do that, you'll ultimately uh, succeed a lot more in life. Yeah. And one of our goals across the student body is to sort of build in a sort of a kind of a peer mentoring level where people can say, okay, Orgo didn't go that well. All right, like this, you know, I, I tried out for something, I didn't get it. Yeah. Um, and then sort of building the muscle of that versus having any of those particular moments be a referendum right. on this is whether or not you're successful or not at Duke. And I think we're, we're moving our culture in that direction. Certainly, our partnership and working with athletics and coaches like you um, makes a big difference in helping us sort of name it so that it's not, it's not, it's not a, it's not a specific to one student or one situation, and it's sort of a broad part of how we build a culture. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's yeah. growth, right? Yeah, it's That's growth. ultimately yeah. what you're looking for in this age range is yeah. growth, almost daily growth, but certainly over the course of these four years yeah. um, that you can look back and say, here's where I started and here's yeah. where I grew and became. Yeah. And so many times growth comes from failure, right? That's, That's right. where it comes from. And you got to pick yourself up and learn. How do you how do you engage your players when the growth isn't linear and the success isn't linear? We I had a whole conversation with a parent group the other day around this idea that you know it's sort of it can be like you get into Duke, 
you pick your major, you know, you study abroad, you get your, you know, you get your academic honors and you get your job, your internships will all line up. But one of the things that we're trying to do is, is create this idea that it's not all linear, right? Yeah. It, it's not sort of the first internship might be a bust. Right. Um, the first, you know, the first major might not actually speak to the kid. Um, and then the sort of the pathway, pathway through using those opportunities when it's not going great um, to create more growth is important. How do you how do you all talk about that? How do you talk about non-linear growth yeah. and success? Yeah, I think probably the biggest thing we talk about, and you hear this a lot of time with, with sports cultures, is it's process, not mm-hmm. results, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. you focus a lot on you know, did I get up today and do I do everything that I'm supposed to do to accomplish my goals? Yeah. And here are the goals that I have. And we make our kids really set out kind of clear cut goals on what they want to achieve in the classroom, socially, yeah. on the football field. Um, and then just make sure that we are doing things on a daily basis that our actions meet our goals. Yeah. And if we do, then let's not look at the results, right? Yeah. So maybe I think lifting is going to get me where I want to go on the football field. And I've been lifting consistently, but I'm not getting the results I want, yeah. but that's okay. Just keep working with the goals that are, or, or the uh, actions that are going to get you to those goals. And if you keep doing that consistently over time, yeah. results will change. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing we talk to them about is, is that, you know, your actions will always control the results yeah. at in some time, yeah. right? Just keep yeah. doing it over the course of time and ultimately you'll get where you want to go. You find opportunities to celebrate when it breaks when it breaks through for somebody. Does everybody know about it? Yeah, yeah. for sure. I think you you try to point them out. I think that's probably what happened yeah. to our team yeah. uh, over a twelve month cycle. Is okay. Here's you know this kid worked this hard to create this opportunity yeah. for himself, and here's the result that he's celebrating. Yeah. Let's all celebrate it together. But then a lot of the other kids in and around it see success in yeah. some way that makes yeah. them continuing to pursue to look for that breakthrough that ultimately gets them where they want to go yeah and yeah. what's the what's the approach when somebody you know you got a lot of guys that want to do really well we got a lot of duke students who want to do really well and often they they've not had um that sort of like plateau for as long yeah as so like how do you how do you how do you talk one-on-one or how do the, how does a student leader talk to to somebody who's plateaued for a while and they're kind of hitting the wall and they're frustrated? Yeah. And I'm thinking about applicability for our parents. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is just open conversation. Yeah. Like, okay, hey, let's let's have a real clear conversation about exactly where you are. Yeah. You know, uh, whether you're a biology major or yeah. you're a social major or you're a business major. Okay, you did an internship yeah. and it didn't work out. Let's yeah. talk about what did you try to get accomplished? Yeah. Why did you fail? Yeah. Where were the where were the struggles? What yeah. did you do well? Because let's not assume yeah. everything went wrong because that's yeah. never the case. That's right. Yeah. And let's let's really break it down to the to the core of what went well what we did poorly yeah and then let's set a plan of action moving forward yeah to continue to work and so that I think when you do it that way you don't ever feel like it's a long plateau yeah. because I think every step along the way you try to have these little um you know goal-oriented meetings yeah. where you're saying okay here's here's the next step yeah. and let's take it yeah. and so then maybe it feels like even though the results haven't quite elevated the level you want them to, yeah. you are still progressing forward to, yeah. to achieve something and accomplish something. Yeah, if you zero sum it, it's easier to say the plateau lasts for a long time. Yeah. If you break it down into sort of incremental growth and, and sort of indicators of change. Yeah. Um, and I'm again, I'm thinking about sort of, you know, again, with academics, you know, that this can be something, physics is a great example, right? There are certain disciplines where some of our students will walk into physics and physics will be a light switch goes off and they got it and they can keep going. Um, most of our students, and even our very smart Duke students, they get into physics and it's going to take significantly more repetition right. on the same concepts before they're going to be able to move. And one of the big adjustments for first year families is that academically, um, we just move so much faster. So the right. reps have to come more quickly and the, the reaching out for help and support is um, it's vital to, right. to people being able to sort of like sometimes, sometimes folks will, the students will withdraw into a corner and say, I'm going to just keep working through this physics problem when the answer is to go to office hours. Is there an equivalent in, in football? Like, yeah. Uh, like sort of how you, how you kind of not, you don't just put it back on yourself. No. And, and I think what you try to do is, is, you know, the first time they show up here, yeah. the, the speed of the game is moving so much faster. That's right. yeah. It's the same it's thing. The same. Yeah. Our kids are really dealing with it in both levels. They're That's getting right. in the classroom yeah. way faster and on the football Big field yeah. way faster. And, and, you know, one of the things we try to do is we try to create an environment where they feel like they can come talk about yeah. where they're at or, right. or talk about the struggle and, yeah. and not try to hide um, exactly what's going on and, yeah. and where they're at with things, because uh, I think that's really important. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's critical for them um, to feel like they have the opportunity um, to continue to, to ask for help and yeah. ask for support uh, and not feel like they're in this thing on their own. Yeah, it's so big. Um, you know, mental health is a big topic for our for this this generation of college students. We have found in the pandemic, so just sharing for you and for everybody, 
um, that our, our, our 18 to 22 year old population has bounced back more, uh, su more success is a wrong term, but more whole and fully than the rest of us, right? Yeah. You know, so if you look at data across, um, you know, the sense of belonging, sense of connection, being a part of something bigger than yourself, um, you know, feeling sort of healthy and serving your sort of general engagement, our 18 to 22 year olds, they're doing better than the rest of us. We are, we are, we are carrying some pandemic, um, people, you know, parents, you know, you know, yeah. I, I want to do a support group for parents and middle schoolers. I'm in the wrong Zoom. Yeah. Um, but um, but but the the students are doing. Hi, folks. We've just been notified that they lost connection. Um, so we're going to have them log back on. If you'll give us just uh, two minutes. Thanks. Let me go ahead and uh, put a plug in here for those of you that have just hopped on. Uh, you are more than welcome to use that Q&A function that is down in the chat. We would love to hear your questions that you might have for Coach Elko or for Vice President and Vice Provost um, uh, Mary Pat McMahon. Um, at the same time, you can also um, be sure to, to mark your calendars. I want to go ahead and plug in case you didn't hear. Our next webinar is going to be hosted on Monday, April 17th. Uh, that's at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that's going to be with our two deans of our undergraduate colleges, the Trinity. Trinity College of Arts and Sciences and the Pratt School of Engineering. Deans Gary Bennett and Jerry Lynch are going to be with us that day to give us a little bit of a state of, of the undergraduate experience and answer your questions about what's really going on at Duke right now um, in terms of undergraduate education and their hopes uh, for the future. So mark those calendars, be sure to use that chat function, and we will wait just a couple more seconds for Coach and for Mary Pat to hop back on this call. Thanks again for being here. And it looks like we're back. So we're going to bring back Coach Elko and Vice President and Vice Provost Mary Pat McMahon uh, to continue the conversation. Coach, I'm not sure where you were um, um, in your conversation when it actually cut off. So feel free to jump back in with that last yeah. question. So thanks again. Right, right. Um, sorry about that. And we'll move to questions from everybody else in just a second. I think I got two more. This then uh, I was kind of doing a long winded run up to this one, but it's really about mental health um, and sort of ways when 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 your players are you know, they're, 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 we do a lot around here to create conditions so that we can keep, keep people in optimal thriving, yeah. help seeking. When you got somebody having a real, having a hard time, how do you lower the stigma to, to seek connection and sort of, um, sometimes the student athlete experience can be 
you know, so much more public and be part of it yeah. to help people need? How do you lower those barriers to help people get the help? Yeah, I, I think the first thing is this. I think we've had to change our thoughts on mental health in the yeah. last probably yeah. five to eight years yeah. of what it really means. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean um, you're not doing things the right way. It doesn't mean internally you could be doing yeah. better. It just means the circumstance you're in is giving you a really hard time and, yeah. and you've got to find a way to overcome come it. And so we start very proactively uh, yeah. from day one in our program of just making sure they're aware of the resources they yeah. have, the people that they have. Um, we try to encourage it. Um, like, hey, listen, if you're having a hard time with something yeah. um, before it becomes a mountain, yeah. like sometimes one conversation at the beginning of a problem yeah. eliminates a problem, sometimes yeah. internalizing it and letting it fester, letting yeah. it grow, letting it continue to become a problem. And you end up burning yourself right. in a mountain of thoughts that you can't get out from underneath of. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing. And I think we've had to like really push and open yeah. the the avenues of communication with mental health yeah. because I just think it's, um, it's a reality you it's know a reality. And, and the other thing that I think is very real and probably very important for these parents to know is you know social media causes a lot mm -hmm. of stress right mm -hmm. and and yeah. you can't take it away yeah. um, because it's the way of life no. and it's how these kids communicate and it's how these kids interact um, but there are a lot of, yeah. of backsides to yeah. that right. um, and a lot of those cause a lot of these mental health issues yeah. and making sure that we're aware of that and that we make sure that our kids are aware of yeah. that, yeah. Um, that, that it's not all just positive, that yeah. we do have to understand that there are some downfalls and then just how do we navigate through them yeah. um, so that they don't wind up taking us off our path and where yeah. we want to go. Yeah. And there's a lot of, with there's, there's starting to be more research around sort of when you're sort of in a, um, you know, a, a sort of a trickier spot in your mental health, when your mental health is lower, um, you you can you you know there, there's a thing where our clinicians see students saying I know that it doesn't help me I know it's not useful and I'm just sitting there swiping through Instagram or other things and seeing seeing what looks like everybody else having a great time and I'm and I'm I'm suffering and it exacerbates the suffering right so that that sort of social media piece like yeah. you said it's never going to go away but one of our jobs I think is to educate and raise awareness about when one is in a sort of um, you know a, a, a less a less healthy spot. Um, in their well-being, it can be like that social media stuff. Those limits are even more important, yeah. right? And sort of like striking that. Balance. Yeah, and, and I think we do a lot too in educating on social media yeah, and trying to get them to understand like social media is make-believe. Yeah. Like it really is yeah, in so right. many ways. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of direct interaction that happens that's important for these young children. There's yeah. a lot of um you know so, direct communication yeah. and news that's important but there's also a lot of like fairy tale correct and and trying to creating the these yeah. things that are not real but certainly feel real yeah because of the the mass sway that they can produce right. and so trying to get them to understand both sides of it you know yeah. like when when you're seeing things on social media that make you feel overly positive yeah that's not real either right. yeah um so that we can try to keep our kids in a lane that's a little bit more consistent yeah. without the big swings yeah um and that's really big for our student athletes right. who kind yeah. of deal with it from a fan base standpoint and uh yeah. you know they miss a pass and all of a sudden they're the yeah. worst quarterback in the yeah. history of right. duke and right um, right right, right. Yeah. right yeah yeah i mean that and that's a lot for anybody to go through that's right. an awful lot for 18 to 22 years there's no doubt to be going through and as and, you know the yeah there's sort of there's just the, for all of us i think i'm getting questions oh i am getting questions on my phone are you ready i'm we, ready these are, this is the ask the ask ask from the audience questions. i love it all right. So one, you said you have a first year in college this year. What lessons have you learned as a parent so far? Yeah, That's a good I, question. I think um, I think probably the biggest thing is is to let him grow, yeah. but still be there as yeah. an outreach yeah. piece for him. Yeah. Um, he's actually had, we were just talking about this off camera, yeah, uh, right. a little yeah. bit of a rocky run yeah. with his athletics. Yeah. Um, he's really enjoyed school. He's really enjoyed that. But, you know, it, it's trying to find that balance of like not being overbearing, yeah. uh, allowing him to be on his own and find his way, but just know that I'm a phone call away. Yeah. Um, and he's utilized that at times. There's been yeah. times where like, I've been on a call with him and I've hung up and I'm like, wow, I'm glad he yeah. felt comfortable reaching out to me and then there's been times where I've wanted to call that's right but yeah. I didn't initiate the call because yeah. it's like you know yeah. what yeah. I gotta let him go I gotta let him grow I gotta let him do his own thing that's right um and it's probably a balance of learning that I've gone through yeah yeah I mean with my with my kids they're younger um I when they do actually want to talk 
I have to sort of like reduce my sort of like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. Cause that pushes them away. You know, that's sort of like, be, you know, it's like the be chill yeah. as a parent when they call and ask you about like what's happening, yeah. how, things are, how things are going. Um, all right. So another question from our, from our audience, you mentioned the four H's earlier and you talked about heroes and who are your heroes? Um, yeah. So my, my story is pretty unique. So my mom had me when I was 16 years old yeah. um, and, and dropped out of high school Her and my dad both dropped out of high school. And I grew up in a trailer park in New Jersey. Okay. And uh, I went from a trailer park in New Jersey to the University of Pennsylvania yeah, to shaking Coach K's hand at yeah, center court great. as the head coach at Duke. And yeah, so um, my mom has always been my hero, uh, making her proud for yeah. the decision she made and the sacrifice she made has always kind of been my story. Yeah. It's amazing. Who did I meet? I met your aunt. Uh, I think you met my aunt. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, so because I was, yeah. because I was that child, yeah. um, my dad has nine siblings. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was by far and away the first of my generation. Yeah. So like you can come out to a, a blue devil walk here yeah. and you can find a lot of members yeah. Yeah. of the Elko family yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. littered up and down the walk. Yeah. Totally. yeah it's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. My dad's one of eight. And, yeah. You know, I got 28 first cousins. Yeah. Most of us yeah. didn't go to college and when, those of us who did, it's really, that's like, the family. It's something. Yeah. yeah. That's our family. Sorry. Um, the second part of the H is about your heartbreak. You willing to share something about your heartbreak? Is that one of the H's? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think probably my uh, biggest heartbreak in life was um, kind of, <laughs> this is hard for me to talk about, um, it was kind of taking like my family through the struggle as I kind of got into coaching, um, started having success, uh, went through a lot of hard times with my father, um, had some addiction stuff, had to help them through that while I was kind of fighting my way through, um, probably never felt like I did the right way. Um, don't know that there is a right way. Um, but at the end of it came out, on the same side, yeah. uh, mom and dad got back together. Um, that was probably now 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, that. Thanks for sharing that, because I and I think you're know, helping our helping our our students again. That goes back to that non-linear. Yeah. Thing, right. Our successes aren't linear. Our stories are not. No. You know, the the front page glossy version. Right. Is not the whole story. No. It goes back to the social media stuff. Yeah, right? and I, I tell recruits all the time, like when I when I sit down and talk to recruits and we talk to families. Um, you know, success is going to be whatever you make of it. Yeah. And and whatever whatever story yeah. you've been given, whatever circumstances you've been given, um, hard work and, and work ethic can write a chapter for you yeah. that nobody can envision. Yeah. Um, and so just go do it. Put some meaning into what, what you were saying before about sort of the repetition produces results. Would you say there's a there, there's a phrase that you're using about sort of like how you show up every day, yeah. the way that sort of you build on it? Yeah, right? it's a process. Yeah. What yeah. you do is a process. And as you go through it, like constant repetition towards your goals yeah. will ultimately get you the results that you want and, right. and making sure we talk to our kids about prioritizing their choices yeah. to match their goals yeah. and it's just critical yeah good good for you good for them um all right so as one of our newest coaches what's been the biggest surprise to you about duke that perhaps our parents and families might not know i would probably say this just just as a big picture i would say how much of an athletic culture we have yes. in our student body. Yes. I think when you look at, uh, you know, what is considered one of the elite academic yes. schools in the country, I think a lot of times they feel as though there's not that student body connection yes. to want to be yes. part of athletics. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've been amazed by the student That's support amazing. we've yeah. gotten and, yeah. and the tailgates and them yeah. coming out to the football games. And, yeah. You know, obviously you can go into camera and you yeah. see an unbelievable school spirit. Yeah. Um, I just think the support that our students give yeah. to our student athletes yeah. Uh, at a school where there's so much pressure on them yeah. to achieve and they've got so much yeah. uh, in their corner too that they're working on and dealing with. I just think that's an amazing piece of our community. And it's very unique as you yeah. go around to the different schools like us. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I see it as unique from our sort of consortium of private schools yeah. sort of admissions rate like yep. us. I think you're saying you see it as unique from the, the big football schools too. No, and I'm yeah, saying even the, the admission. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying like yeah. if you look at a Stanford, if you look yeah, at Northwestern, yeah. if you look yeah. at the schools that are yeah. supposed to only prioritize yeah. one lane. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. we do both yeah. lanes here very, very well. We do both lanes here very, very well. I mean it, yeah. I'm, I appreciate I appreciate you saying that. Um, how do you as a coach who's in the spotlight often model self-care for your players? Oh gosh. Great question. Model Put that one in there. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. like we're talking about finding time for yourself. Is that what we're talking about? I think sort of when they look at how do you sort of, you know, find the balance? How do you, yeah. how do you do the things that are for you? How do you sort of show rest? You yeah. Know, how do you do that? <laughs> it's a challenge. Yeah. It's yeah, a no, challenge. It's, I, totally I, I probably, yeah. I immerse myself in yeah. my family. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the people on this call have mm-hmm. figured that out already. Yes. Yeah. Um. So like, like I have no problem going and sitting at a, at a hockey rink and carry yeah. with a bunch yeah. of families. Yeah. Um. I try not to, um, you know, allow myself to get sheltered or to yeah. get into these spots where I have to stay out of the public eye. Like yeah. I have no problem yeah. going out and being yeah. around people. Um, I have no problem bringing my family into this yeah. community. Yeah, I've seen your I think that, that, that yeah. to me is really yeah. important because yeah, it showcases it. Um, and then, benefits and then honestly, I probably, I probably talk to them about balance more than I exhibit it. Yeah. Um, but we yeah. try to, we try to talk to them a lot about, um, creating time and where they can get away. That's um, right. because I think sometimes, you know, football and the college experience yeah. can be yeah. overwhelming. Um, yeah. and we give them breaks where we truly let them like get yeah. away, just yeah. get away from this thing a little bit. Yeah. I probably need to do that a little bit more, to be honest with you. Well, I've also, I'll tell you, I, from what I've seen of, of you and the coaches and the team together, I think you're also modeling fun and people yeah. take not you know you don't take everything super seriously you've got you've got you've got your priorities in order and i think that's part of modeling self-care too it's yeah. like letting people be joyful letting people have a good time you know it seems like you've got that yeah that for sure in church. for yeah. sure that yeah. i mean we yeah. don't we don't want this to be an experience they look back on and say man i really didn't like my four yeah. years you right know? right uh, it is hard yeah. enough being yeah. a duke student yeah. being a college football player yeah. uh, all of that is hard enough we don't have to make it much yeah. harder yeah yeah <laughs> it's really cool um, this uh, this this question starts out funny, but I love the question. Here here it is. I was having my oil changed in Durham one day, and an employee there told us he was in his forties and he was a huge lifelong Duke football fan because some Duke players had helped him with his youth football team when he was a kid. How cool is that? Um, how's your current team connecting with the with the Durham and local community? Yeah, I think that's probably one of the post COVID things yeah. that's been awesome. And yeah. I think I've been able to in my time here, we've really kind of gotten rid of the COVID restrictions yeah. in and around the community. And yeah. so, so um, we spent a lot of time at two children's. Uh, yeah. I think that's critical yeah. Uh, yeah. for our kids to get around. Um, some of the kids who are less fortunate uh, yeah. and provide joy and relief to yeah. those kids, but also to keep them grounded yeah. um, in, in what they're doing and what they're chasing. We do a lot with Ronald McDonald. Yeah. Um, that's something that's really important. We do a lot with the Durham Rescue Mission. Yeah, uh, and then we get out into a lot of the local schools yeah. and, and we just re, yeah. we just kind of show Huge. our face and um, show the kids in the Durham community yeah. what can happen. And uh, yeah. if you just keep chasing your goals. Yeah. I mean, the the power of those interactions, I mean, this is a great example of it. And people do remember 30 years later yeah. what their interaction was with somebody. And um, and I know that your guys know that. I've, I've seen them sort of engage young people and sort of be in the community in a way that's that's really transformative. You know, those little touch points, they last for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Very powerful. I yeah. love this question. And it's one of the unique things with the Duke community, yeah. right? Is, yeah. is I've been at some programs across the country where you have to drag kids yeah. to community yeah. service. Yeah. We more often than not. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we just put out an open thing on Teamworks yeah. to say, hey, yeah. sign up. And then yeah. we have to have a meeting yeah. of who we can, we're not letting go because we yeah. get too many kids to sign up. It's, it's yeah. a really cool piece of our program. Yeah, I've noticed that. That's that. And that transfers across the Duke student community, too. It's, yeah. It is. It is. It's a remarkable thing about sort of the, the campus that we've got. We're very lucky to be around. Yeah, the there's no doubt. Um, what excites you the most about the current state of Duke football? Uh, I think just the energy and the buzz yeah. around it. I, I think we came in here um to try to create expectations yeah. and, and create a program that people yeah. wanted to be successful wanted to support and wanted to follow yeah. uh and i think in one year we've done an amazing job of, of creating that buzz I, I think um when our kids walk around campus I, I think people are excited to see a duke football player they're excited yeah. to go up and talk to a duke football player i don't know that was always uh how it was and, yeah. and i think you know i think I've had a lot of students grab me as I've been walking across yeah. campus. I'm so excited yeah. for football season. I yeah. can't wait for football season. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's what it should be. Yeah. You know, there should be a school spirit around yeah. those Saturdays in the fall that everyone wants to be part of. Yeah. And uh, I'm probably just really excited to how, how the buzz and the energy is created. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. I got to say, hold on. I got locked out of my questions. All right. Um, I got two more on here. Um, back to the H's. Um, somebody's asking, what gives you hope? Oh, um, what gives me hope at Duke? I'll talk, let's go. Let's go Duke mm-hmm. football with that one. So, what gives me hope with Duke football is that we can build a program where we can kind of do what Duke has done. Duke yeah. has done this in the classroom. They've done around the country and really around the world, yeah. and found the right students that fit this community yeah. to allow this community to grow and become an amazing community. We're trying yeah. to do the same thing in the football program. We're yeah. trying to kind of scour the country and find the right fits for this program. You yeah. know, not every 
kid fits every program. Yeah. And, you know, there's a kid that we're looking for that understands what Duke can do for them, understands yeah. how Duke can shape their life and, and also wants to be competitive against Clemson and Florida yeah. State and Miami yeah. on the football field. Yeah. And, um, you know, our, our brand travels. Uh, yeah, I said that right. from the time I got yeah. hired here, yeah. I think yeah. wherever we go, um, people recognize Duke and, yeah. and that's been the case for a long time. And yeah. now we're just trying to get them to recognize Duke football in the yeah. same light. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just amazing. You know, I, the other day I was, I had this sort of hat trick of things. I went to the women's, um, by the NCAA yeah. championship game. I think you were there. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Um, you know, and just watching our players just do everything, um, you know, and, so, and then sort of, kind of just the way they carry themselves both in the game and after the game, just, they, you know, they, they knock me out every time. Yeah. And then I went and saw the runway of dreams, which is an adaptive fashion show okay our students design clothes for folks with physical disabilities um so that they can have as much sort of fashion as somebody in a different body wow that's amazing. And, and just watching the stuff and then the models are members of the durham community who model the clothes that our students designed and sort of kind of, kind of co-created with them it's amazing and then i saw a bunch of students asking um naftali bennett the former prime minister of israel a whole bunch of questions in a sort of small room after the big talk and just watching them ask hard questions that i think it would take real guts to ask a former you know prime minister of any country right um and watching them sort of hang in there and go back and forth he was loving it and i was just feeling like this sort of duke experience is something that they 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 just they do think that the duke thing carries in part because they bring so much of their heart and soul and integrity yeah. to their games to their to their play um to their co-curriculars and certainly to their academics it's it is and to the leadership that they're developing well um a couple more questions have come hold on a second we got there's a couple of compliments people are saying nice things thank you for the nice things um and then last question for you what should we be keeping an eye on oh this makes me feel like i'm like on you know, uh, pti what are we keeping an eye on for the 2023 season coach yeah i, I think elevation yeah. i think the thing that we constantly talk to our kids about is yeah. is we went out we had a really good year yeah. but that's not all we were trying to accomplish yeah. we were trying to build a program and yeah. to build a program we've got to continue to elevate who we are and what we do every day and we've got some amazing brands yeah. coming into durham next year mm -hmm. uh some great opportunities for us to go out and kind of put ourselves on a yeah. on a big time stage this and schedule things. i mean you're talking about the schedule the schedule yeah. is something it is yeah. something yeah. it is something yeah. and that's another time yeah. for another conversation yeah. but yeah. um as, as we're talking about yeah. challenges yeah. and expectations yeah. Yeah. it's it's yeah. rising up and meeting yeah. those challenges yeah, and it's expectations great. it's gonna be great yeah and so come out and support uh yeah. my yeah. little plug to buy tickets please and yeah. um come be part of this thing because yeah. it's an amazing time to be part of the duke community yeah. and part of our football program and other athletic programs yeah great thanks coach for doing this thanks thanks to the famous for all the questions ben back to you awesome thank you again coach elko thank you so much vice president vice provost mcmahon we're thrilled to have you coach we're pumped um we're pumped and we got your back for this season we've got your players back we're excited there's a lot of energy in that Q&A, um, and so there's a lot of thanks and appreciation from our families for joining us. Um, families, we hope that you'll join us for the next one. Again, it's April 17th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we'll be joined by Dean Gary Bennett and Dean Jerry Lynch to talk about the state of the undergraduate experience here at Duke. Um, we will get this recording posted as soon as we possibly can up to our YouTube page and share it with all of our families and our parents on our listserv. Um, thank you again for joining us. Thanks again to Coach and Vice President McMahon. We will see you all soon. Have a wonderful night. Take care. Bye.